could make an arrangement where um, I had a I had a, a stand in a front man or front woman and, and they had an earpiece in and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff and then I could sort of deliver the lines but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony. Wow. I, I'd be fine with that. He thinks he's being so sly. Oh boy, this is really happening. And you know what? This is not democratic. This man right here is the acting president of the United States. I firmly believe this. We won't be able to find necessarily a, a written record or a contract, but this man, along with Susan Rice, they are calling the shots, and Joe Biden is in big trouble now, especially, oh my gosh, I mean, they knew he was a total klutz, but more documents at his house after it was already searched, quote unquote, uh, this is it. I'm so, I said it weeks ago, he's not going to be the nominee. He might be out sooner than you think. Um, the proof that Joe Biden is not in charge, again, there is no written contract. So much in Washington, D.C. is understood, a wink, a nod, just a certain glance, and you can move mountains. But for the rest of us, let's just observe the body language, okay? Remember a few months ago, this is very significant, at the White House when Obama was there and he completely eclipsed the sitting president of the United States, Joe Biden. It was humiliating. In fact, I don't care if it's a president or, you know, somebody rushing a fraternity, this is painful. <laughs> this is just painful stuff. One guy is the king and the other guy just can't get a word in and no one will pay attention to him. And we all have to understand how little regard Barack Obama has for Joe Biden. He's said it a million times. It's time we all believe it. This is one of the most famous quotes that you probably haven't heard. Don't underestimate Joe's ability to F things up. <laughs> That's rich, isn't it? And, oh, I saw something else. So it was two years ago Friday that Joe Biden was inaugurated. Watch Barack Obama at that inauguration. He falls asleep. And when everybody else is clapping, you know, at the phony applause lines, uh, there's Barack <laughs> sitting on his hands. He is thoroughly unimpressed. This man has no regard for uh, the so-called president of the United States. And let's face it. <laughs> There's so much that he should not be impressed with, like this. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. All right. You know, this is just before they found out about the laptop. You throw in the laptop, you throw in this obvious insensitivity and the loss in Afghanistan. Why would anybody back Joe Biden for president? I mean, seriously, he is a major, major liability. And I, I think that Joe does not understand that. And this is what set Barack Obama off. So around Christmas time, Joe goes to St. Croix in the Caribbean to go to some billionaire's house and play golf. Kind of insulting, by the way. He could go to any military base in the country. He could, he could have a vacation in America, but he went there and he told the world, his team did, that he is to make a decision about 2024. Um, well, that decision has actually already been made for him, and he goes and pretends it's his own decision. Maybe Joe Biden has gone rogue. Remember when Sarah, Sarah Palin went rogue? Did he go rogue? Well, they've reined him back in by letting him get ca caught in his own trap. When my lawyers were clearing out my office at the University of Pennsylvania, they set up an office for me, secure office in the Capitol, when I, for four years after being vice president, I was a professor at Penn. Uh, they found some documents in a box, you know, a locked cabinet, or at least a closet. All right. Um, this still has not been addressed. Why were lawyers unpacking his office or packing it up? Makes absolutely no sense. There's something going on. But here's a little piece of the puzzle. The Penn Biden Center, okay? Uh, on November 2nd, Joe's lawyers go there to pack it up. And I was told this by a very prominent uh, D.C. veteran. You got to figure out who this guy is and who he worked for. This is the lawyer who packed up the stuff. If you find out who he is and who he works for, You'll know who's driving this whole thing. Well, his name is Patrick Moore. And from 2015 to 2017, he was associate counsel and advisor for presidential personnel at the White House in the administration of President Barack Obama. 
I think that's a big piece of the puzzle. I was told ahead of time, you'll find out that this guy was working for Obama, and he is. Oh, did you hear the latest, by the way? A lot of these documents, before they got to that phony Penn Biden Center, they were kept in Chinatown, Chinatown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Let's keep all the documents, top secret and otherwise, in Chinatown. Well, after all, Joe Biden's really close with President Xi, right? So these documents were just floating around Washington in unsecured areas for a long time. Let's see. Joe Biden left the White House January 20th of 2017, more than a year before the Penn Biden Center opened. So that stuff was sent to Chinatown for a year plus. When did the Penn Biden Center open? Yeah, February 8th, 2018. Um, all right. So there's a big Obama presence in all of this. And don't forget the deep state. The deep state is far more loyal to Barack Obama. I mean, he's so cool, right, than they are to Joe Biden. Nobody respects Joe Biden. Nobody has ever respected Joe Biden. And now they're not even pretending. Democrats this weekend, this is significant, are signaling their displeasure in the president. Time's up, Joe. It's happening. It's real. How does a senator accidentally take classified material home? Um, Margaret, I, I don't really know the answer to that question. No. There needs to be this independent investigation, an independent prosecutor. At its heart, the issue is the same. Those documents should not have been in the personal possession of either Joe Biden or Donald Trump. When that information is found, it diminishes uh, the stature of any person who is in possession of it because it's not supposed to happen. To be held accountable and responsible is what we all are. And to put those in un unsecured spaces is irresponsible. Wow, that's it. <laughs> this is, it's happening. I knew it would. It's kind of wild to watch. It doesn't mean we're all free, by the way. I mean, Kamala's next, and, and they're still pulling the strings. This is not a democracy, essentially, in my opinion right now. Um, one more thing. Joe Biden went to his beach house this weekend. His beach house. Now, the FBI and the DOJ have not yet searched the beach house. But Joe Biden went there this weekend. It's January, by the way. Who likes to go to the beach in January? We check the weather. Yeah, this is not beach weather. Is Joe doing a little uh, cleaning up before the DOJ and the FBI arrive? I think it's totally possible. I saw Jill Biden uh, coming back. She did not look happy. I think they know this is the beginning of the end. And oh, by the way, whenever they say this is far better than the Trump situation, You'll hear that less going forward because that doesn't wash anymore. We all understand that the facts are different, that the Biden White House has handled it totally differently than the Trump White House. Totally different crimes, totally different factual uh, scenario than the Biden case. And I got to tell you that it, it, this is vastly different than the situation with Trump. You know, in some ways it is. In some ways it is. And let's go ahead and compare, shall we? Totally different. I could make that case. Trump and Biden. Trump. Those documents, whether Donald Trump was president or an ex-president, totally secure in that compound of Mar-a-Lago. Whereas the House in Wilmington uh, back in 2017, 2018, not secure, not secure for years at a time. Mar-a-Lago, guarded by the Secret Service, okay? Those guys don't mess around. Uh, <laughs> Joe Biden's house, guarded by Hunter. Hunter was actually in charge of security there. Uh, President Trump had absolute authority to declassify any classified document in the entire United States government. Joe Biden had zero authority to declassify anything before 2021. Also remember this, Donald Trump, a billionaire. That's actually important. Um, billionaires, it's considered kind of like a, a rule of thumb that people who are financially secure have less interest or less, they're less susceptible to spycraft, to, to selling secrets, okay? The people who investigate this stuff understand that. Joe Biden has bragged at times that he's the poorest man in the Senate. He has said it out loud a million times. I was listed for all the years I was a senator as the poorest man in the United States Congress. I had the dubious distinction of being listed as the poorest man in Congress for 36 years. I had the great pleasure of being listed as the poorest man in Congress for 36 years. 
Amazing, amazing. Yet he wore Rolex watches, wore $2,000 suits, lived in the DuPont mansion. He bought that as a U.S. senator. How could he have gotten all that money, huh? Yeah, right. We know. Hunter, the laptop, it's all spelled out. 10% for the big guy. He almost confessed to it, actually. He's almost confessing to it. So Joe is in big trouble. And I sensed that they were warning Joe a year ago that he could go down and don't mess with the powers that be. Barack Obama, who knows? But who remembers when Cuomo was forced out of office? Now, I was no Cuomo fan, absolutely. He totally mismanaged uh, the pandemic. He sent Trump's hospital ship away. I was calling for his ouster in the middle of COVID when everybody was saying this was the best guy in the world. I knew better. But I also know this, he's no predator. He didn't harm any woman. He didn't force himself on anybody. That attorney general's report, do you remember they documented all this stuff and said, he must go, he is, he is abusing women. Well, you want to look at him ab abuse women? This is, this is the Democrats' version of abuse of women, all right? Show me a picture. In that report, he is said to have gotten too close to this woman at that very moment, okay? That does not look like a problem. How about when he met that doctor for his COVID test? This was on live television, and this woman is in the report. She accuses Cuomo of misbehaving for this very moment. It was in the report. There should be no reluctance. This is Dr. Elizabeth Dufort, who is in the appropriate PPE wear. Nice to see you, doctor. You make that gown look good. Head up a little bit. Head up. That's the moment of abuse. You make that gown look good. And a few months later, they put this all at a silly report, and he had to go. Wasting energy on distractions is the last thing that state government should be doing. And I cannot be the cause of that. The best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. And therefore, that's what I'll do. And my resignation will be effective in 14 days. So they forced him out for pretty much nothing. I don't know what the real reason was, but the reason they cited was not the reason why he was pushed out. But it was a warning to Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden, <laughs> we've seen him mishandle women, right? <laughs> Young, old, friends, strangers. I mean, we've seen it. And if one of those people were to come forward and say, he, right? You see how vulnerable he is? You see how they got Cuomo to leave like that? They could get him to leave like that. And that's what they're doing. Then not for the touching. I don't know exactly what it's for. Could be the mistakes, could be Afghanistan. And now he's sealed his own fate. When he comes out and <laughs> says stuff like this and goes, goes way too far when he has this problem himself, I'm sorry, he, he, he cooked his own goose. Quinn, you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago. What did you think to yourself? looking at that image. How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? By that, I mean names of people who helped, or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. <laughs> he just went way, way, way too far. He should have said, we'll let the investigation play out. I don't want to say anything. This is, he'll never be forgiven for this. He will never, ever recover. And then he made matters even worse just last week. Hang on, okay? Look, as we found, uh, we found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. We immediately turned them over to the archives of the Justice Department. We're fully cooperating and looking forward to getting this resolved quickly. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Thank you. 
The arrogance, that's what's going to get him as well. No regrets. How dare he? And then documents are found, secret documents going all the way back to his days as a United States senator in the same house where Hunter Biden was living. There's, I mean, unless we're in a totally parallel universe, and, and sometimes I think we might be, Joe is finished, all right? And remember, he was never the boss in the first place. This has always been an Obama-Susan Rice operation. And even after Joe is gone, it will remain so. We'll be right back.